Hi everyone, happy, happy new year. I can't believe it's already 2024. I don't know where 2023 went. I swear it flew by so fast and I'm sure that that not only rings true for me but also for each and every one of us. So I'm hoping that 2024 is going to prove to be a fruitful year for all of us. Like you know, we'll continue to live our lives to the fullest and to gain new experiences and also just you know, to show love, to give love and to receive love. And also one other thing by the way, my background is different because I am now in my home in the province. So this this is where my partner and I usually spend our New Year celebrations and we're here together with our like you know fur babies who will be with us I'm sure throughout the entire um, duration of this vlog. Now I'm actually very excited for our video today mainly because I have a new brush with me and we'll be getting to know this together and it's actually the Refer Saibiko Cheek Brush version B so I am very very excited to play around with this brush mainly because well for a number of reasons actually and the first one being is that this is a brush that has a brush head made of Saibikoho goat hairs and like you know Saibikoho goat haired brushes like you know these are the types of brushes that I don't really have in my collection. Now the other thing that I'm so excited about is the fact that this is actually my first video wherein I am talking about a refer brush because I'm sure if you've been following me here like you know refer brushes I don't have a lot of that in my collection so now that you're actually watching this I'm sure if you're a fan of refer you would already know by now that I purchased a number of refer brushes recently because this brush is currently only available on the secret shop on your refer account so this brush is not available to the public yet I think so if I have any more details about the release of this brush I'm gonna put it down in my description box and uh, please do follow me on Instagram because for sure when I get any more like you know details about this particular brush I'm gonna be posting it on my insta stories okay and also one other thing I have just recently purchased a number of refer brushes and I'm going to be making a video about them like in the next few weeks so please do subscribe if you are like you're interested to know more about refer makeup brushes okay all right so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my camera over so that we can see this brush intimately so this is my Refer Saibiko Cheek Brush version B and I'm going to be fondly calling this brush my White Sakura Saibiko Cheek Brush from Refer because of the white Sakura petals that is designed onto the handle of this brush. Now I'm sure if you're a fan of Refer you would have known like you know the difference between version A and version B. So version A if you don't know already is actually a Saibiko Cheek Brush as well but the main difference is the handle of that has pink sakura flowers on it and the brush design is actually flat and round which is more traditional than this Saibikoho cheek brush version B and truthfully I actually love the brush head here and that's the reason why when I first saw this on my secret shop on my refer account I said to myself I am gonna dive down and get this and here we are so the brush head here if you take a look at it from this angle it looks flat and round um, it also flares out a little bit but if we put this to the side we can see how plush it is how voluminous how airy it is and it also reminds me of the design of our pads of our fingers and I love brush heads like this because it's just very easy like you know to apply like you know product on the face so yes so when I first saw this on the website I said to myself this is actually a much more interesting um, you know brush for me to have um, instead of the version A so that's why when I first saw version A like you know released into the market and people were like you know scrambling to get it I was like you know um, thinking hard if I was going to actually get version A because I was very uninterested with the design of it um, even if the brush head is made of Saibikoho. So when I saw this design I said yes this is the kind of brush that I was actually waiting for. So this is actually quite special to me because this is my second Saibikoho brush in my collection because my first one is actually the Koyudo Sakura 2023 Maquille Powder Brush. So if you want to see me talk about this brush I'm gonna put a link down on the description box that you can go and check it out. And since we are in this topic now I'm not gonna compare this brush to other goat hair grades um, like, you know, that I have in my collection because I already did that extensively with 
my video for this brush. If you want to, like, you know, hear my thoughts and, like, you know, comparisons about, like, you know, Cybicoho versus Psychoho and, like, you know, various squirrel brushes and even a fox hair makeup brush, uh, go check my video for the Koyudo 2023 powder brush because um, that's where I'm going to be talking a lot about that type of comparison. So for this video, we're just going to be solely talking about the white sakura saibikoho cheek brush from refer if we take a look at the brush here this is the overall design of the brush we have a matte ferrule here and then we have a matte black handle here and we see this white sakura petals on top of the handle and we see a very like you know thin branch of the sakura tree here which i believe is like you know applied using the maquille technique but it's not a very generous kind of maquille application on the handle of the brush which to me truthfully is a little bit disappointing because this is a very special brush to me you know so maybe they could have been a little bit more generous with like you know the design on the handle because it just makes it more special but then again I do understand why the design of the handle here is actually very minimalistic because I have just realized right now that refer has very like you know minimalistic kind of an approach to the design of their handle so it's actually very like you know on par with their like you know brand so so the brush head here, again, is made of a full head of Sai Bikoho gold here. It is amazingly soft and very silky. It is very plush and it's also very airy. Take a look at that. Isn't that amazing? So I believe, like, you know, again, this will give us a very nice soft application of color. And, like, you know, it's not as full as, let's say, my Kuyudo 2023, like, you know, um, powder brush because you can really see like, you know, how full that is on the belly here. So I don't know how this will actually perform in actually, like, you know, picking up powder products from the pan or even like, you know, it's buffing ability, but I'm sure we will see that out later as we play along and like, you know, use this brush to apply different kinds of like, you know, powder products on the face. I also like that it tapers to a point in this portion because like you know to a certain degree it will allow us to apply like you know certain kind of detailing application like on the cheeks so maybe we can use this for a highlighter maybe or even bronzing um, product but I kind of like it though so I'm very excited to try this out to see how well this will actually perform so um, yeah look at that very nice very plush and then there's some strength in the belly of this part of this brush head so as you guys can see it if i just like you know try to um play around with the brush head here especially at this portion here so this the kind of the very back of the brush this is the one where it has the longest um length of hair and the front here has the shortest okay so at this portion if we just play with the brush head, you see that it snaps back into position quite quickly but if it's in this part of the brush like, you know, the front part, if I just do this, it actually has, has a much more softer snap back into position of the brush head. But again, I'm so glad though, just as I am like, you know, playing with the brush head here, we can see that it retains its shape quite nicely. Look at that. It doesn't go out of shape, um, like, you know, instantly. But then again, you can see like, you know, how delicate the hairs of Saibikoho goat hairs are. Um, that's also one of my fear that if you just like, you know, be Come very um, aggressive with your application of makeup here you might this might lead to breakage of the hairs because after all Sabikoho goat hairs are one of the softest smoothest and also one of the most delicate types of um, goat hairs that you can use on a makeup brush okay now just for a short comparison since we're here already so this is my very small um, Saikoho goat hair from Sonya G and this is from the mini Keyaki set so this is the soft face brush so as you guys can see, there is a difference in the texture of both brushes because the Saikoho here has some texture on the bristles. While as you guys can see here on the Saibikoho gold hairs of the Refer Saibikoho cheek brush, it's quite smooth, okay? But in terms of res resilience, the Saikoho gold hair here has more resistance and resilience at the belly here while like you know the Saibikoho gold hair of this refer cheek brush is actually very very soft so you don't get so much resistance so that's why i have come to the conclusion that if you have Saibikoho gold hairs in your collection it has to be like you know plusher and it has to have more um hairs 
in the brush head, especially in the belly, to give it like you know ample, like you know strength and resilience. That's why this one, like oh my gosh, I was able to re really buff out like you know colors with this brush. So I'm quite excited to try to see how this will perform for us today. So before we continue with the demo, let me just show you guys its very beautiful packaging that it came with. So of course we have this very nice Polonia wood box. And what I find so like, you know, cute and endearing with the packaging of this brush is that we have this kind of like belt here, which is actually elastic. So um, if you look at this, it's kind of like, you know, the, the Polonia box here actually has like, you know, an OB belt. And this is like, you know, the OB Jimma or like the OB Jimmy that keeps everything in place. So if you just remove this, you remove the washi paper and we can see that you know, this is the Kumano Fude seal, this is the kanji characters for Kumano Fude, and we have refer here. So the characters here are not lasered into the wood, but it's actually, you know, I think, printed. Because the Kuyudo Sakura 2023 powder brush actually came with a Polonia box as well, but the design on the Polonia wood was actually lasered on it. So that's the main difference. Anyway, so what else do I see here? Yep, so there's nothing at the back. So if we open the box here, this is what I loved about it, by the way. We had this nice black washi paper here, and then you actually had to open it. So it kind of like added to this very nice, like, you know, ceremonial effect of like, you know, the brush actually being like, you know, introduced to you. I love this touch. So it kind of like adds like, you know, to the experience of actually purchasing the um, version B uh, white Sakura Saidiko Hochi brush from refer. Now the tips of the bristles of the refer Saibiko Ho cheek brush is actually very very translucent. Now you won't see it right now because it's actually quite gray and cloudy and oh it's actually raining so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert a video here and I'm gonna show you guys I mean you know I'm just like twirling the brush head under natural sunlight so that you guys can see how well the light reflects off of the tips of the bristles. It's actually very, very fine and it feels quite luxurious. The brush in general is actually a very beautiful brush despite on how minimal the aesthetic is. It's actually like, you know, a very Japanese kind of aesthetic. Now also one other thing, by the way, um, when I first got this brush, um, if you've seen my unboxing video of this, this actually was able to stand on its base because the base is flat here. But now that the brush head has actually like, you know, blue to its actual shape um, the center of gravity has actually changed and it kind of like topples over so um, I actually prefer to store this um, like not aside from putting it in my like you know brush bag but I can store it in a like you know brush holder like this where I can I can just insert it in the silicone pad here and it keeps it like you know upright but um, speaking of like you know the design of the handle here it's actually very easy to maneuver the handle like you know on the fingers or on the hands like you know the length is just right like you know from the tip of the ferrule here all the way to the base like you know it's very comfortable to hold very comfortable to maneuver and it feels comfortable even if you're holding the brush this way it's not hurting like you know the palms of my hand very nice i love the way that i'm actually able to hold this now it's a very light brush it doesn't have much weight to it but i'm sure this is top heavy Okay, so just be careful on how you actually like, you know, put this on the table or like, you know, on wherever holder because this has a tendency of toppling over. Okay, all right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a hint of makeup on like, you know, just to add like, you know, some even texture, even color and maybe some brightness to add some like, you know, glow into this very gloomy day. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom over this and then let's continue with this video. Okay, so I just set my under eye area with some translucent powder using the F02 brush because I don't think this brush can set powder in my under eye area, the refer um, Sebiko cheek brush, mainly because the brush head is quite big. So um, look, it kind of like covers my entire like you know, eyelid. 
So that's why I skipped that. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I am now going to set my face with some powder on this side of my face i will be setting it using translucent powder so i'm just picking up some of the product on the brush head here and i don't know if you guys can see it let me pick up more so it's here so let us try to see if this will lay down product quite nicely okay the brush head is actually very very soft and um, I don't think that this is quite effective to use as like, you know, a brush that you will um, set foundation with because like, you know, as I'm continuing to tap the product into my face, you guys can see like, you know, how soft the brush head is and it's actually going out of shape. And at this point of the video, like, you know, when I'm applying the loose powder on my face, I can actually feel that it is actually this part of the brush that's applying the powder. And this part of the brush here, the longest part of the bristles, I don't think it's doing anything. So maybe to a certain degree, it's actually able to apply powder, but I don't think it will be able to buff it up. Well, mainly because the brush head here is very, very airy. So um, if we are going to use Saibikoho goat hairs as a powder brush we have to have a Saibikoho goat hair brush that's actually quite dense and very thick like you know and just full of hair especially at the core of the brush head like this one because this will really help to apply and to buff out like you know powder on the face especially if you're going to be using setting powder it was actually very interesting I like doing this activity because it just gives us an idea of what a brush head can do especially like you know if the designs of the brush heads are actually very different but then again as you guys can see it's actually able to like you know mattify like you know, my face a little bit it still does the job so like you know if you are someone who has sensitive skin and like, you know you can't really use very resilient brush heads like you know the ones that have very very like you know thick composition of bristles this is good to have all right so on this part of my face i am going to be using pressed powder so let me just press the brush head here onto the pan and it picked up a substantial amount of product now i don't think you can see it but i can actually see it that when i actually press the brush head into the pan the majority of the product that gets picked up is actually in this portion of the brush. So at least now this gives us an idea of where the strength of the brush actually lies. And if you're going to be using this brush for like, you know, color application, you know where to angle it so that you're actually able to pick up more of the color or the product that you are going to be using. Okay, so I'm just going to pat that into my face, maybe do it in a sweeping motion. Like, you know just so that it's a different type of application because the bristles here are actually very very soft that it will not disturb the foundation or the products that you actually put on your face so it's actually a very thin layer of product it doesn't really pick up much so if you want to have more like you know lay down of powder when you're setting like you know your foundation loose powder is better to use with this brush than pressed because again like you know with pressed if you oops you really have to press the brush into it just to like you know break down the binder so that the brush head is actually able to pick up you know the product and you'll be able to blend it into your skin again as you guys can see let me just put this down the brush head dances very nicely on the face it's plays out widely there you go look at that not so much like you know um, resilience in the core of this but it actually feels very nice on the skin quite amazing so again if you have sensitive skin this is going to be the brush for you okay so let's move on and try some other colored powder products and now i actually would like to use this baked um, matte bronzer from laura mercier and let me just like you know press the brush here onto the pan and it actually did pick up a good amount of um, product and again we see that the concentration of the product pickup is actually in this portion of the brush 
Okay, so let's apply this now in a brown tour kind of a manner. Okay, that's actually nice. So it's actually able to apply a very nice diffused color onto the face. But I'm actually, like, you know, still quite surprised that it actually able to, like, you know, pick up a good amount of pigment. And it's actually able to lay it down quite nicely here on the cheeks. Very nice and very soft. Again, very easy to apply. So at least, like, you know, if you're someone who likes to apply, like, you know, bronzy uh, colors this way, very nice and very diffused, this brush is good for you. Okay, let me apply a little bit of that here in my forehead area. No, but I think it's just way too soft, like, you know, to use this brush when you want to apply in a much more bigger area. So you actually need a bigger brush head for this. But this brush is perfect if you just want to use it here on your cheek area. Okay, so that's some bronzer down. Very nice and very soft. Very delicate, like, an you know, application of color. So let's move on. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to you know clean the brush head here like you know, in a dry brush kind of a technique wherein I'm just gonna load the brush head here with some translucent powder and remove some of the excess color here on a micro fiber towel so that it just doesn't make it muddy okay so I have now some of my voile coriel loose powder blush from Givenchy and I have ooh, I think this is way too much here on the cap let me just mix them together and let me pick up some of the color here on the tips of the bristles here. Hmm. Okay, so let me just tap off the excess. That way it's already blending nicely. Very good. Okay, so because when I picked up the um, color from the cap here, I saw a lot of like, you know, the pigments clumping together. And if I uh, apply the brush straight into my cheeks, uh, like, you know, with all the pigments clumping, it's going to create texture on my skin. So that's one thing that we have to be careful, okay, when we're using um, loose powder blushes. We have to press it first at the back of the hand, just so that the pigments mix together, and then let us apply it on the cheeks. Huh. I'm actually seeing this very delicate application of color on the cheeks. Again, very soft. So I think this is like, you know, the overall performance of Saibi Koho brushes, wherein it applies a very nice, delicate wash of color, very cloud-like. And this is actually the same experience when I actually first tried my Kuyudo um, Sakura 2023 Maki brush. It's actually the same. I actually like the size of the brush head here because it's actually perfect, like, you know, a brush for your cheeks and again we have this very nice instant like an you know, application of soft color on the cheeks very nice I like that okay let me just buff it out a little bit more but I don't think I can buff this out like you know extensively so when you're using Saibikoho cheek brushes you have to be very um, like you know decisive on the placement of the blush because you might have some trouble blending it out and like, you know, being um, like, you know, sculptural with your application of the blush on your cheek. Okay, very nice soft application of color. I love it, I like it. Okay, so let me buff out the color again on a microfiber towel. And now I have this pressed powder blush from Laura Mercier and this is in the color Bellini. And again, it picks up a good amount of pigment despite its very airy nature. And let me just apply it here on the highest points of my cheeks. Okay, and again, we have this very nice like, you know, application of color. Very soft. But I believe the color is actually softer in comparison to a loose like, you know, powder blush. Because after all, this is pressed. So you have more binders in it. So of course, the color tones of this um, blush from Givenchy. This is in... While Coreal, so it's actually warmer. It has more red tones in it. While this blush from Bellini is, mm, like, you know, it's, it doesn't really pop much, but it has a very nice brightness to it that I actually like. Okay, fantastic. So that's how this brush works with loose and pressed blush products.
All right, and now I would actually like to try and use these highlighting powders from the Butterfly Palette from Hourglass. And I would actually like to use this portion of the brush here to see if it can, like, you know, be effective in actually, like, you know, picking up such um, products, especially that these are baked, like, you know, gelée products. So I'm just pressing the tips here onto the pan. And let's try to see if, ah, yeah, I can actually see a nice delicate amount of, like, you know, highlight applied onto my cheekbones here. Hmm. So it's actually strong enough to pick up and deliver such products. It's actually nice. I like that. Very good. Because again, earlier, like, you know, when I was just playing with the brush head, I was a little bit worried that it might just be way too soft, that it can be, like, you know, very limiting when you're using this brush for, like, you know, a number of, like, you know, products. But, like, you know, it's actually quite strong to be able to pick up, like, you know, just the right amount of highlighters. And it's actually able to actually deliver it quite nicely and effectively on the skin. But again, you just have to be very precise with it because as soon as it lands, like, you know, it, you can't really buff it out. So again, you have to be very decisive about where you are going to apply your colors on the face using the refer Saibikoho cheek brush, okay? Now, I would like to pick up this blush color here with the brush. And let me try to see if this will actually, like, you know, deliver color in a much more wider sense with this type of formula yeah i can see the red tones coming out now and it's actually able to like you know blend itself into the blush that i used earlier it's actually quite nice again we have this very nice soft wash of color very nice and very pretty i like that maybe here let me try and i have also realized that if you pick up a ton of the blush at this part of the brush head here it's actually able to apply a nice impact of color can you see that hmm again i'm very surprised on that performance so again you have to be very precise with your like you know application like you know you, with your intent of where you want the blush color to be on your cheeks because i think um blending this out might be an issue but what you can always do is you can pick up your translucent powder Pick up some of that and then apply it to the edges of the blush just so that it diffuses. So again, just tap it and this creates a nice soft layer along the edges. And I have just realized now that the sun is trying to come out from the clouds that I actually failed to pack my MAC Studio Fix Powder Foundation. And I'm really bummed about that. And I would like to apologize to you guys because I really wanted to uh, try to see how that kind of a powder formula was going to work with this Saibiko Cheek Brush from Refer. Because again, like you know, the brush head here is very airy and fluffy and very wide and it's not very dense. Like you know, it's in comparison to my Kuyudo Sakura 2023 Maki Powder Brush. And I really wanted to see the difference like you know between these two on how they will like you know apply those types of powder formula because as we all know powder foundations if you use a very dense brush and you pick up a ton of the product when you apply it like you know, it becomes very cakey instantly and it also changes the texture of the skin and even the color. But you know, right now that I'm just you know, thinking about it and I'm also basing it off of the experience using my like, you know, pressed translucent powder from Laura Mercier, I'm sure that this brush is a nice pairing with powder foundations because it will not pick up a ton of product and it will just apply a very thin layer of powder foundations on the skin. And again, now that I'm thinking about it, like, you know, I can use this brush with those types of powders, especially if I just want to, like, you know, do some retouching on set. So, like, you know, at least it just tones down, like, you know, the shine a little bit without actually adding way too much, like, you know, um, texture on the skin. All right, so at least I have something to look forward to when I go back to my home in Metro Manila, like, you know, something to play with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a pinned comment on my experience using this with powder foundation formulas, okay? So I believe that's it. We have come to the end of my vlog for today. So I hope that you guys find this useful and insightful. And this is my experience using my refers 
by Bikoho cheek brush. So if you have any more questions about how I use this and you know all the other makeup products that I use today, please let me know down in the comments box and let's have a conversation about it. All right. Okay. So I'm going to let you guys go now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here and I hope that you're having a good day wherever you are. Bye.